I am Pafua Yang in Crystal. Here's a few stories making news today. A Maple Grove Dental Clinic is donating its services to essential workers on the front line of the COVID-19 pandemic. We'll have you fill out your medical history forms. On Friday, employees at Maple Grove Smiles Dentistry volunteered its services to grocery store workers who've been putting in some long hours during the COVID-19 pandemic. Anything a patient needs that I can provide same day is what I'm focusing on today. 68-year-old Linda Newberger works at the deli department at Cub Foods in Maple Grove. Well, I keep busy. Not a lot of people run like I do. Newberger says it's been about 10 years since she sat in a dentist chair. The single mom made sure her children and grandchildren had everything they needed before focusing on herself. I haven't been able to eat hard food, potato chips, anything, just because the teas are all gone. Costs also factored into her decision to delay dentist visits. There's other things important in my life than worrying about that. That's why she's so grateful for today's generous gift. I literally started almost crying when she told me I was going to go to the grave like this. In Maple Grove, Sonia Goins, CCX News. Hi, I'm Delane Cleveland in Brooklyn Park. Anyone out there who's looking to fulfill their craving of traditional African food now has a new restaurant where they can do that at the corner of 85th and Zane. In the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Monday marked the grand opening of Glamour African Kitchen. The restaurant is owned by Gladys Etta, a Nigerian immigrant with her own catering business who wanted to open a restaurant so that other African immigrants could have easier access to the food they're used to eating from back home. The menu includes a variety of rice and soup dishes, as well as meat pies and meat on a stick. Etta says she makes the food from scratch and uses fresh produce in her recipes. She says the customers from her catering business gave her the motivation and encouragement to venture into the world of being a restaurant owner. This is the day I've been waiting for all these years. Um, I know I've been looking for a location for this business for so many years, and uh, I'm grateful to God. Glamour African Kitchen will be open Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., and Sundays from 1.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. In Brooklyn Park, Delaney Cleveland, CCX News. Just Knitted hats woven in softly colored yarn are placed in Sheila Ennisvet's trunk every Monday. Oh yes, yep. Hats with bows, stripes and ruffles, you name it, it's here. I do all of them. I love doing the sports hats. Those are my favorite. Ennisvet is among the 60 volunteers that knit newborn hats for Maple Grove Hospital. This, our group started in 2009 when the Maple Grove Hospital opened. Phyllis Johnson started the Knitting Grandmas and Friends group with only three volunteers. Now they're 60. Well, it was fun because we, we found so many new friends and people that were interested in knitting. Volunteers craft hats at home and drop them off at the Maple Grove Community Center on Mondays, where Ennisvet takes it to the hospital. We have to have 100 hats a week in order to keep up with the hospital. The hospital has about 400 babies every month. To date, the key knitters have created more than 45,000 hats for newborns. And if by chance uh, we get behind, we can just put out an email and ask for people to make some more hats. But we've never had to do that. Even when COVID-19 broke out, the babies kept coming and the hats did too. Volunteers had to transition their meeting place outside and still maintain a safe distance. And then once the hats get to the hospital, we've been, um, you know, keeping them isolated for a period of time. And despite the global pandemic, knitting has given volunteers a purpose. I get to see a lot of the babies leave, and it's always fun to see them leave wearing one of the hats that's come from our group. In Maple Grove, Pafua Yang, CCX News. Gallery 5004 in Robbinsdale is dedicated to spotlighting Minnesota artists. And this month, the works of Hugh Capel are on display. He was born in um, Berlin, Germany uh, in 1910. And he was born to a, a fairly well-to-do Jewish family. Capel got a degree in philosophy in Germany before chasing his first love, art. But from there he went 
1934, he went to Paris, France, where a lot of people went to get a good art education because that was kind of the epicenter. While in France, Capel ran with a pretty heady crowd. He was actually showing in some very prestigious galleries at that time with the likes of Picasso and Chagall and Hugh Capel. But as the 1930s wore on, things in Europe deteriorated especially for Jews. So he moved to New York City in 1938, and he was there for the next 20 years. Well, guess what happened in New York City in the 1940s and the 1950s? It was the biggest art movement of the 20th century called Abstract Expressionism. Which Capel embraced. But by now, you may wonder, where's the Minnesota connection? Minnesota may have been the solution to his wife's urging to seek financial security. He wanted a regular paycheck. Uh, so in 1958, he came to Minneapolis and took a job at what was called then the Minneapolis School of Art. It's now called the uh, MCAD, the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. And he taught there for the rest of his life. Uh, and he kind of passed away unexpectedly in 1982. On display are Capel's works in acrylic, oil, watercolor, and collage. If you can't make it out to the gallery, all of the works will be posted online. Although you may not ever be able to own an original Picasso, Pollock, or Hans Hoffman, you can own an original Hugh Capel, who was right there with those guys. And coming by to look is always free. In Robbinsdale, Neil Persley, CCX News.